yeah. I love my HBCU. And Bob, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor yes, sir, yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. All right. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode 517 of Dr. Ville's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. And as you can see, I am not the esteemed dean, but I'm getting the privilege of sitting <laughs> be standing behind the big podium today along with uh, one of the the voices of, of Southwestern Athletic Conference Baseball, Mr. Charles Bishop. Welcome again. The show that covers the HBCU sporting diaspora. I hate all things HBCU sports for institutions large and small, from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture and <clears throat> excuse me, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletics programs and the business of HBCU sports. So again, I am not Dr. <laughs> you got it, but uh, got Charles Bishop in with me and we are filming from our home studios <laughs> and sending a signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM studios with the Texas Radio Hall of Fame, Ralph, Car Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Today's episode of Inside HBCU Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. Today's going to be a great show. How you doing today, Mr. Charles? Doing well, Brandon. Doing well. Uh, stopping in here on a Thursday. I, I appreciate you inviting me on. So I uh, definitely wanted to come in and, and lend an ear to see what's going on in HBCU uh, news and notes and sports. To, and, and generally, you know, what what have we to talk about today on this Thursday, on this <laughs> June 13th, as we speed towards uh, the various media days, if you will? Yes. And, and you know, it's funny you mentioned that because Media Days, as you, as you just mentioned, they're, they're coming up. I did see uh, they're, they're starting to announce, and I know the SIAC announced uh, when theirs is, as, as did the MEAC. And, and I wanted to ask you, because I said you, you have more experience in the arena that, than I have, because um, I, have, I have not attended many Media Days. I've attended one. Um, I have not yet to attend the SIAC, but from the videos I saw in the pictures, uh, from the one last year, it looked like it was a real uh, A-plus, first-class uh, presentation all the way. Um, so have you um, been to the SIAC Media Day? I know you've been to, to the SWAC one, but uh, if so, how, how was your experience and how would you describe it? Yeah, I think the experience is, is great for both of them. I've been to the SIAC Media Day, uh, but, you know, you, it's your first opportunity to kind of uh, meet uh, the, the new year, if you will, uh, in yeah. terms of coaches uh, bringing their student athletes in and, and, and you get an opportunity to kind of sit down and kind of, you know, kind of get a lay of the land uh, in, in terms of, uh, of what the upcoming season will be like for, for the various teams. And, and you do start hedging a little bit, if you will. And, you know, there's a, a swagger certain coaches have. There's a, a, a confidence, an air about them. Those teams, especially that are a, Pick the you know finish in the upper tier. They they they, they have a different walk about themselves. So it's, it's definitely uh, an opportunity to get and 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 sort of pull the curtain back a little bit on the upcoming season. Yeah, I think like like I said, when when you come to to media days, there's always that that air of kind of excitement, hope, uh, answering you know potential 
expectations because everybody, like at that point, they're zero and zero, and and everybody thinks that they're they're ready to win that conference championship, uh, and and you get to kind of see, you know, the, the temperature and where everybody thinks they're they're going to be, and and uh, like I said, from what I saw, it was you know it looks to be really exciting. I have I have like I said, I've yet to to go to uh, either the the SIAC or MEAC, and I'm not even sure about the SWAC because uh, obviously, look, <clears throat> we're on we're on the countdown for for Baby Watch here. So, oh, congratulations! Thank you. Not one, but two. Oh my goodness! <laughs> bless bless <laughs> yeah. your heart. Oh yeah, man. yeah. So, um, we're it, it, it that's looking like that's going to happen sometime in in the next, hopefully, especially from my wife's perspective. Perspective, hopefully, <laughs> in the next. <laughs> Three to four weeks. She's definitely ready to stop being pregnant right I'm now. I'm sure. I'm sure, man. <laughs> Congratulations. But uh, I think, you know, I mean, when you start taking a look at this year's media days, I think uh, there's a lot of intrigue. And I don't care what conference you're talking about, whether you're talking about the SIAC, uh, there's there's change at the top. Uh, yeah. No, no, no Benedict. Uh, or, or I should say the the uh, the change at the top, if you will, with Benedict. Uh, the, the SWAC has – new quarterbacks all over the place, you know, yes. uh, Miak, there'll be uh, challengers uh, hanging out, if you will, uh, trying to knock Howard off the throne. So I think there's a lot of intrigue going into this year's media days. I, I, I'm, in, I'm uh, interested and curious to start talking to some of the players and coaches in terms of uh, getting their perspective, uh, just to see how all these teams start gelling now. And I mean, uh, you go to any campus right now, you see guys, uh, it's shirts and shimmies, you know, they're, they're getting in their work, their summer work in and things of that nature. Uh, mm-hmm. But they are starting to kind of get a fix for some of the new guys coming in. And we have tons of new players coming into the conferences, whether you're talking about the SIC, CIAA, uh, MIAC, or the SWAC. So uh, it, it presents a, a challenge. I think that's the buzzword for the day, presents a challenge. Yeah. And like I said, <laughs> there's, there's, there's so much said, uncertainty, whether well, obviously you're, you're looking at uh, the the SWAC, and obviously with the changes you know, that, that happened with with FAMU and everything, and some of the coaching changes, and 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 several we saw some big names moving and shaking in terms of the portal. Um, and, and and again, like I said, the SIC is going to be really interesting because um, will 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 Benedict be able to stay up top, or will somebody be able to to kind of step in that 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 power vacuum that was created by, uh, you know, Coach Barry, and, and and I saw that they'll be he'll have his quarterback, Mr. Phoenix, back in Orangeburg yeah. uh, yeah. with him as well. So you yeah. you got to look at that and whether you know what say a, a Quinn Gray is going to do in, in his second year at Albany State, and you, and you can't you know get a, a Tuskegee and all of these teams that, that that's going to be in the mix and and especially um, in looking at the SIC with them eliminating the divisions now yeah uh, yeah that's really gonna you know every week it was already important but when you eliminate divisions you don't have that that to and i don't want to i hate to use this but to kind of to fall back on mm-hmm. you know every you know you lose a couple back to back you're in trouble yeah yeah so, so now um every every week uh even more so in that conference is going to be heightened and, and, and said looking, looking at the, at the MEAC, obviously, you know, Howard has, has got the target on their, on their back getting to the, to the celebration bowl, but you know, and, and we just touched on a little bit. South Carolina state has kind of got the buzz around them. You know, they, they, they've got the new pretty toy coach coming in and, and all of the buzz surrounding that and seeing what he's going to be able to do uh, with that program. But you know, you, you've always got, you know, Central is still probably going to be in the mix. You know, is is and and I got to see uh, Norfolk State up close and personal when they they came to Nashville. Um, I think that the, you know they're going to be a school that, that's going to to have a say in 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 who uh, goes to Salem before it's all said and done. So, you know, th- this is already you know we haven't even you know they look. Fastlers have not even been processed yet. Right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> we're, we're looking already at at at, uh, at next season, and that's the thing about 
um, media day, it's kind of it, it starts to not only I'm, I'm going to say, you know, for for on on the, the players then and obviously from a program perspective, but it kind of marks the I guess you'd say the official start of the mm-hmm. season. And, and, and that kind of creates the buzz even amongst your fans, because now it's, it's putting, you know, your, your football team back out in front of you and at the forefront of your mind. So it, it's going to be. Very interesting to see some of the things that, that come out of of uh, media day and, 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 you know, and they make some of those preseason announcements in terms of superlatives and things of that nature. And that always generates buzz. And, I, and you know, uh, in terms of when you get that, that, that first and second team announcement of potential players of the year, uh, offensive and defensive. But I think you use a term that I, I think is going to be very prevalent. Uh, in in whatever conference you're talking about, whether CIAA, MEAC, SWAC, or SIAC, power vacuum. You know, is there a power vacuum uh, with regards to the changes that, of course, that we talked about at Benedict? The changes, of course, that happened at FAMU. Uh, I, and you know, does does some of the old guard sort of get back into the mix? Whether you're talking about a, a Southern or Grambling. Uh, in the SWAC, uh, whether you're talking about a Miles or a Tuskegee uh, um, in, in the SIC. And, and, and it's, I, I think it just presents a lot of intrigue. So I think there's a, a lot of uh, fans looking forward to media days, uh, whether you're talking whatever conference uh, you're a fan of. So, you know, we get a, you know, get to pull the curtain back. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, hopefully, like I said, I don't know if I'll be in attendance in any this year. <laughs> but I'm hoping to uh, to get a chance to to attend some in the near future. And uh, I tell you what, let's go ahead and, and head to our our first commercial break. This is episode five seventeen with Inside HBC Sports Lab, and we'll be back in two and two. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is always ultra thins reinvented with the always triple protection system. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvée. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love yeah. and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Right, welcome back to episode 517 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. I am Brandon King in the behind the big podium with Charles Bishop. And um no, we, we just came off of, you know, talking about media day and, and, and looking forward to, to uh, next season. But there's still some, there's, there's still a few uh, accolades and attributes, or not attributes, but accolades given out for, for what happened last season. And um, Dr. Alvin Parker, head coach of the Virginia Union Panthers, uh, was recently honored as the Black College Hall of Fame Coach of the Year 
uh, at their ceremony um, last week in Atlanta. And <clears throat> when you look at um, what he what he did again this year, uh, claiming yet a, a, another uh, CIAA uh, championship and and making another uh, playoff appearance, you know, we talked about uh, obviously, you know, in terms of of the other conferences, the SWAC, the MEAC, and the SIAC, the uncertainty and kind of looking up and in, in who's going to, to be at the mountaintop. When you look at the CIAA, you know, everybody, they're, they're looking up at Virginia Union right now because mm. when you win, you know, back-to-back conference titles um, and, and you make, uh, you know, consecutive postseason appearances, right now you are, you are where all the other teams want to be. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. And, and, and worthy recipient. And, and when you take a look at those Virginia Union teams, another strong defensive presence. Uh, another year where they had one of the top ranked defenses uh, in the CIAA. And as we all know, those of us who follow football, defense travels. Uh, <laughs> whether you're, uh, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter, uh, you know, in terms of what you're doing offensively. Defense can carry you when the offense isn't clicking. But uh, I'll tell you what, Virginia Union had a stellar year. Uh, and you look for them to kind of build upon the year that they had last year, hopefully get out of that first round of the playoffs. Uh, but uh, this is uh, – I'm looking forward to what Virginia Union brings into this upcoming season. Yeah, because, like I said, when you, when you look at what they, what they did this year and you brought up the defense, if they can just even build on or maintain what they had, when you look at – what they did defensively. They were the, the second ranked defense in the CIAA. And I think it was like, it's under, I want to say it was 13.8 yeah. points per game. And when you look at their schedule, they did not allow a conference opponent to score more than 20 points at any point throughout the season. And like you said, the defense travels, whether it's on the road or at home. Um, and if they can, continue to build upon that, then there, there's a possibility, you know, that everybody's talking about UConn three, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we could be looking at uh, the Panthers hoist, hoisting another trophy. And let's not forget, uh, they, they still got Jada Byers in the backfield. Hey, you, you have Jada Byers, Will Trout. I mean, that that is uh, one of the premier – uh, running backs in all of uh, HBCU football. Uh, when you take a look at his production over the past, what, three years now, uh, Jada Byers is uh, definitely, you know, it's almost like you start looking for his stat line week in, week out. Uh, and you know he's going to be north of 100 yards in, in whatever game he plays in. But very interestingly, and I'm sure Alvin Park is happy at Virginia Union, but 40 and 13 during his tenure at Virginia Union. You know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, he's probably getting a couple phone calls every now and then. Oh, yeah. You you know, anytime you have success like that, the other other programs, as, as I like to say, they're sniffing around and they're, they're kicking the tires to see, you know, what's up. He's probably getting some of those, those hey, big head messages, you know, to, <laughs> to try to see what's up, you know. Exactly. When you, like I said, you, you look at what he's done and, and, and transform them in, into the – the powerhouse of the conference. I mean, <clears throat> if if I were doing the, the preseason picks, that's, that would probably be uh, my number one. And I mean, it, it, it's it's pretty easy to understand uh, why. And, and, and even when you you dive into to, to some of their stats and whatnot from last year, be it running the football, um, and I know we know that that passing gets a lot of the attention. Yeah. But if, and, but again, just like you said, the defense and the run game can travel as well because it, it you know, whether it, it's raining or, or whatever, the quarterback doesn't have it or whatever the case may be. If you if you if you got a horse back there that you can can give it to twenty five times a game, then then you're already uh, you're already setting yourself up to, to to be successful. And and they've got those two key components. And, and if, if you have those, then, then you're, you're going to be in a good position. And, and um, <laughs> that, they are the uh, the quintessential bad weather football team, defense and run game. So you, you got to have that if you're going to play all the East Coast. So. And, and so, you know, if, if you're in the CIAA, when you when you go play the Panthers, you better bring your lunch pail and your hard hat because it's, it's going to be 60 minutes of, 
of physical hard football. So um, congratulations, you know, once again goes out to, to Dr. Alvin Parker. Um, and, you, and you touched on what he's accomplished. So uh, great win, win for him. Mm-hmm. And, <clears throat> you know, we'll once again, we'll, we'll see what what they what they're able to do once the season starts. And, I, you know, this is a I don't want to spend a, a great deal of, of time on this. I'm just going to gloss over this briefly because I, I do have I got some stats that I like to put out there. You know, the the whole celebration bowl thing being being moved. I said, I don't want to belabor the point too long, mm-hmm. um, but I, I will say this. I am I actually don't think that it, it's a bad idea for, for that game to be moved. And for those of you who don't know, that, uh, <laughs> that news emerged that they're, they're moving the game up basically a week. And <clears throat> But the, the scheduling and all that stuff aside, it, and I know we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, when you even you, you look at – uh, from a couple different standpoints, I think that the one, obviously, the, the boogeyman of, you know, dealing with the, the NFL and, and some of the other major games, even if you look at it last year, some of the other college games that it performed well against. But um, when you look at it, they're going to have the, by and large, the stage to themselves. And, and they're going to be, you know, for lack of a better term, the, the bell of the ball that day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so... I will I will say this that I think that that moving it so they, they kind of have their their chance to shine. I think it, when you're not having to split eyeballs, because when you look at I just said the past three years, um, there's been kind of a slight downtick, even though the quality of football has seemingly went in the other direction. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a little bit of of a decline in in the ratings, and, and we saw that even last year. So. I really just brought that up to say that if, you know, if, if that game is going to be by and large, uh, some of the ones or not some of the ones, but basically the only game in town, literally, yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better term, you know, whether your team is, is, is there or not, you know, if you can't make it down to the dome, tune in um, and, and help the game, you know, put up some numbers. You know, I know my team, the, the Mighty Tigers of Tennessee State, we probably – we we'll, we'll, we we got other we'll, we'll be trying to be in the playoffs, but if your team isn't, you know, check it out and and uh, you know let's let's uh, have some good numbers for the game because you know whether um, you know whether your team is in it or not, you know I think even even you know your rivals we want to see HBCUs as a whole do well and 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 on this national platform, you know well, I just. Uh, you know, and I think you said something uh, very important. Uh, when you really start to take a look at it, the date that it was on, the stage is now crowded. Uh, yeah. There once was a time when that uh, you had the stage to yourself, but uh, now we're in a day and age, of course, with the college football playoff coming online. And obviously, it, it will present a challenge uh, for the SWAC, uh, especially uh, only having a, a week, you know, to prepare for the Celebration Bowl. But um, – Show me the alternative uh, if you still want the eyeball. So uh, I think that's the the thing that you sort of have to sort of take a look at. So uh, no doubt a a challenge, but uh, it's kind of what we do with HBCUs. We we figure out the challenge and work around the challenge. We do. So look, I I just look. I I didn't I didn't want to stand on my soapbox on that one for too long, (laughs) but uh, I I just want to I want to start at this point. We're six months out to rally the troops to. To, to, to get behind it and support it no matter um, when it is because you know we're already uh, with so many things behind the eight ball um, mm. you know we we whether it be funding or what you know, we know these things so if we've got a chance you know let's 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 show up and show out but the good kind of showing out not sure. the kind that gets you in silver bracelet so um <laughs> Look, that 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 concludes my. I'm, I'm stepping down off my soapbox about that because there's been so much said on it. But I just wanted to kind of approach it from that angle, uh, mm-hmm. and and and, and kind of uh, start to already plant that seed amongst the people already. <laughs> understood, Brandon. Understood. <laughs> so with that being said, let's go ahead and go to our our, our second break here. Again, this is episode five seventeen. 
inside the HBCU Sports Labs, and we'll see you all on the other side. Well, I'll tell you what, while, while, we're, while we're waiting to... Itchy, squirmy, scratchy, family not getting clean, get Charmin Ultra Strong. Go get him. It just cleans better. With a diamond weave texture, your family can use less while still getting clean. Goodbye, itchy squirm. Hello, clean bottom. <laughs> <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? At Hampton Law, our primary goal is to provide non-traditional yet effective solutions and redefine the approach to client legal concerns. As your trusted legal advisor, we believe in sophisticated, personalized services that eliminate the confusion and complexity sometimes associated with legal matters. Our high standard for client care and concern, coupled with our extensive legal knowledge and skills, make Hampton Law a resource focused on the protection of the client's interest and overall goals. We value our clients and truly enjoy working with them. Visit thamptonlaw.com to conveniently schedule an appointment online. Tamika Hampton Esquire, 1631 Rock Springs Road, Suite 336, Apopka, Florida, 407 Four nine four one four seven one, T Hampton Law dot com. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High-quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge, featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. When it comes to analytic data with your hip hop, if you know them like I know them, they're going to tell you if your team, if they want to lock you yeah, and root about, root about. So listen to Professor Yesa yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome back to episode 517 of Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Brandon King and, and Charles Bishop. And um, actually, to get into something that you raised earlier, and, and that is the Southwestern Athletic Conference has released their ESPN uh, football schedule. Um, and it's highlighted by, by several matchups, but I wanted to to get your thoughts on it, Charles, as you look through uh, some of the matchups that they've got listed with, with any games that that, uh, that stood out to you uh, or caught your attention that you'll be be circling on your on your calendar as we we move into to football season. So let me start here. I, I, I think the very first game, um, uh, which is the, the BX Swag Challenge, is going to be extremely intriguing. Uh, because quite honestly, uh, people need to see if Norfolk State is going to make a move this year, and who better to go against than the than the reigning Black College National Champions with regards to Florida A and M. A lot of intrigue around the Rattlers uh, in terms of uh, all the changes that have happened, and you know, I, I think as fans, everybody is really into. Uh, we got this this person out of the transfer portal. We got this person out of the transfer. He comes from this school. He comes from this school. It, it, you know, it, it means mm, 
you know, it's, it's, it's how they jail. You know, it's how they jail. So uh, that's an early statement game uh, for both programs, for Norfolk State and for FAMU, because, you know, people want to see if there is going to be, quote, unquote, the power vacuum that we were talking about. You know, so you get an early look-see in terms of uh, how explosive or maybe not as explosive teams were as from last year. Uh, the, and then you look at the following week. Uh, intrigue around the South Carolina State program with regards to Tennis Berry. You got Texas Southern Prairie View. It's always a grudge match. Um, if you ask me one that I always circle, I, I, you know, I'm a Jackson State guy, of course. So September 14th. <laughs> September 14th. Uh, Southern at Jackson State. Brandon, if you've never been, and it's going to be difficult for you to go this year. But, you know. <laughs> Put put that on your mark that on your calendar too as as one of your uh, games to go to in the future. Southern at Jackson State as always. Uh, you're looking at forty to fifty thousand people. Tremendous tailgating and just two fan bases that just you know they can't get along. You know they're like first cousins that's always competing at something. That that's that Southern Jackson State. Uh, but I mean I think you know where is Connell Maynard with regards to his program of Alabama a and You get another look-see, September 28th, and Alabama a and they go to Tallahassee to take on Florida a and So a lot of Florida a and games on the ESPN docket this season. Yes. Uh, you will get a great opportunity to see if there actually is a power back in, uh, in the SWAC East, uh, to see if there is a team that can match up to the reigning Black College National Champion. Yeah, I, I agree. You you touched on a couple of the, of the games, and, and like I said, they they get off to, to hit the ground running with that that Norfolk and, and Fam matchup. Um, it's because, like I said, you know, one you, with, with them, you've got to, what are they going to look like now in the post Willie Simmons era and all of the the turmoil and the all the things that that was going on with that program over the course of the the off season and, and how they're going to look. Who's going to be the quarterback? Yeah, you know, how how are they going to look on on both sides of the ball, and and then you know with with Norfolk State, uh, you know with uh, is Dawson Odoms and, and and those guys are they are they going to finally take that step forward in the MEAC because it seems like they they will start to and then they they kind of have have stumbled, um, a couple seasons, um, so I'm I'm again looking at that game and and, and you said it you. It was almost like you were reading my mind that South Carolina State uh, and FAMU game for really some of those, those same reasons because um, for for a large audience that that's going to be their, their first time getting to see um, what the Bulldogs are going to look like in the MC of, of the Chinnisbury era. Yeah, um, and, 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 and you know the other thing that I really take a look at, you know, especially at the very beginning of the season, we're starving for football, right? Uh, and you get some just intriguing matchups. Swat versus MIAG. Uh, another one that I'm really paying a close attention to is North Carolina Central and Alabama State. A lot of people are pointing mm-hmm. towards Alabama State as being the next team up uh, to ascend to that to that throne with, within the SWAT. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do uh, against North Carolina Central because you know uh, uh, the Eagles are, are fighting to get back into the mix of things. Uh, a little surprising, if you will, uh, that they didn't get to the Celebration Bowl last year. But, you know, can they get themselves back into the mix this year? So it'll be very intriguing to watch. Yeah, especially, like I said, with, with both of them trying to figure out. We, we've talked about um, teams trying to figure out their quarterback positions. And, and you'll obviously, <clears throat> with that, that Bama State and Central matchup, a lot of the attention will be on uh, Andrew Body and, and how he's going to to look uh, in terms of, of integrating himself into that system. And, and or what, will he? Or will he be the quarterback? The, oh, that's even even that. Yeah. So you know, because like it, that, it, it's not necessarily a given that that, that he's gonna gonna be under center. So from that, it, it's a lot of uh, intrigue in, in in some of those early matchups. I'm also looking at the. The, the very next, or uh, yeah, September the 7th, I'm looking at that, that Miles and Alabama State matchup. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to say, oh, SIAC, SWAC, you know, they should they should run those guys over. But as, as we have seen with these matchups over the past couple of years, that's not always going to be the case. And, and, and for me, uh, you know, another team that should have bugs 
is Prairie View and m You're talking about one of the winningest programs in the SWAC over the past 10 years. They've been knocking at the door, knocking at the door, knocking at the door. Can they actually <laughs> knock the door down this upcoming season? Uh, a lot of excitement around the Prairie View program. So, and then just the fact that you have, you know, we talk about there's going to be new quarterbacks all over the place, but there's coaching changes at Texas Southern. There's coaching changes at Grambling. Coaching changes at at Southern. Uh, so I, I mean, of course, fam, you. But uh, just the the intrigue of having all this newness this upcoming year. Going back to Swag Media today, that pulling that curtain back is going to be uh, even more important this year to really kind of get uh, early look see in terms of what a lot of teams have. Yeah, uh, for for those who will be at Swag Media Day and were, and were there last year, you'll have to you got to learn more new coaches than you do some of of the old ones. Getting back to to what you said, and one of the things, and, and you touched on it earlier, is is Alabama A and M, and you know now <clears throat> with all the changes, Conor Maynard is the longest tenured coach in the SWAC, and since they you know they they've come off that that winning the that spring uh, championship, when you look at it, they've kind of just been middling, you know at best, and and. You know, we talked about – you talked about Prairie View. Will they be able to take that step forward and, and finally kick down that door? Will Will Alabama A&M potentially be able to to kind of take a step forward, uh, you know, to, to get back in, in competition or, or be in the mix again? And, and if not, you know, will we'll, we'll – that seat, that coaching seat, start to warm up a little bit. And, I, and I'll say this also, uh, and I and I've joked with TC Taylor about this. You know, seven and four is his baseline. So he <laughs> for <laughs> Jackson, for Jackson State's fan base, it can't go under seven and four. So you kind of you know take uh, you know pay attention to what Jackson State is going to have uh, this upcoming season because you can make a hard argument they might have the best backfield uh, in HBCU football. They're going to run. The, the Dickens out of the football. I want to say something else, but I'll keep it PG. <laughs> it, and I, I mean, so there, there's, there's so many um, matchups. We, we could do a two hour show just, just looking at, at some of these, these various matchups. Um, and, and there, there's so many that, that we haven't even got talking about, you know, we didn't even, you know, talk about, you know, some of the new coaches, you know, Alcorn has a, a new coach and a granted, the guy that's within the program, but you know, obviously he's going to come in and, and while he may keep some things the same as, as, as uh, Fred McNair had, he's going to put his own spin on it and, and how, how his, uh, how that program is going to uh, sure. take shape and, and develop. So that, that's going to be um, an, an, an interesting process to observe. So there, there's so much um, intrigue and just as we look at this schedule, um, and, 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 and speculation and, and things of that nature. And, and it's going to be fascinating to see just how some of these these uh, storylines, or lack of a better term, for some of these teams and, and whether uh, some of these moves in terms of coaching changes and, and, and transfers and, and things of that nature, how that's going to, to play itself out. We'll see what, what works and, 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 and what doesn't. Um, as we move through this season, and like I said, it, if, if you're a, if you're a FAMU fan, you're gonna be happy because you're gonna be on eleven times this year. So oh, eleven? I thought it was about thirty. I, <laughs> <laughs> I got to zing the rattlers when I can. So <laughs> I understand. So I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> I, I will never get in the way of a little swack on swack violence because. <laughs> As as a Tennessee State man, we just sit on the sidelines and we just watch. You well, know. Brandon, you, you you're gonna have to work your magic and 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 get your guys back into the the realm or the fold, if you will, of <laughs> a little conservative trash talking. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it, it's a little different. Look, it's a little different trying to trying to talk trash with with some with. Someone at Tennessee Tech, uh, and it, uh, and it uh, is uh, or Southeast Missouri. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. That's a, that's a totally. <laughs> your backfield is not as good as ours. You know, <laughs> it, it, it's a totally it's a totally different uh, uh, flavor. But they, no you know, doubt. 
Look, they, they're teasing us. They, you know, they, they didn't sprinkle a little bit of, of Howard and and A uh, and T into the schedule um, in twenty five and, and twenty eight. So, look, pe- <laughs> people are already they're talking about those games <laughs> that are a year and two years, three years away, more four years, I guess, twenty twenty eight. Then they then they are then the, the, the games that are that are on the schedule for this year mm-hmm. and. You know, I've I've said it so many times, man. We they're they're starving for that. Yeah, you know? I, I bet, I bet. I mean, super thirsty. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, it's it's just <clears throat> when you when you you look at it, you it, the schedule comes out because this was even the case when I was in school. You look at three games, well, four at that time. You would look at, of course, who are we playing in the John Merritt Classic. You would look at. Um, uh, Southern Heritage, of course, we knew that was Jackson State, and and this I'm going to date myself on this. We looked at Atlanta Classic. All right, we got that, and then you would homecoming, and then you would dot to see if if, if another school was sprinkled in that you might want to see, because you really have to be a, a diehard fan, and I've said this for years, or someone who really loves football to go watch us play Eastern Illinois or Western Kentucky. And I've been to those games, you know, when we lived uh, close by. And there, the energy, the attendance, it, it is different. It is completely mm. different. Um, and, I, you know, that's kind of why. I, that's part of the reason, you know, Coach George uh, finally allowed his frustrations to, to come forth. <laughs> earlier this season. And I'm sure we could do a whole nother three shows on, <laughs> on on Tennessee State. What should they do? But uh you know that we'll save that for another day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know they <clears throat> trust me, I could like I said I could go on for another hour, but I'm not. I'm not I'm not. Understood. Um, understood. You know we're we're, we're forty five. I guess we can um uh, okay, I tell you what. Um, let's kind of switch into kind of one of the I don't want to say the last stories, but I found this was a story I found of particular interest to me um, because any time that I can talk about, write about when two of my th- favorite subjects come together, which is of course HBCU sports and sneakers, hmm. I, that, that's always a good thing for me. So. <clears throat> the uh, the Mecca Society and their a a uh, their alumni uh, uh, populated funded NIL collective, and so what they have what they have done is they're obviously you know as we have discussed that when it comes to our schools financial resources is always a need, so. Basically, what they have done, you know, they're taking donations, but if, for a three hundred dollar donation, um, you can get access or, or get one of their team specific footwear. And for those of you who don't know that that Howard back in I think it was August of 22, 2022, let me say they signed a twenty year uh, entered into a twenty year partnership with Jordan Brand. So obviously, they get team specific shoes and whatnot, and so. Uh, you can get a uh, team-specific Tatum or a team-specific Luca um, for three hundred dollars, or if you do a five hundred dollar donation, you can get both of them. So I thought this was a pretty creative way uh, mm-hmm. uh, of, of taking advantage of, of not only um, the interest uh, in sneakers and things of that nature, but also an interesting way of, of drumming up. Uh, uh, money for for NIL. So, what 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 are your thoughts on on that particular um, story there? Well, I, I think, like you said, uh, it's creative. Uh, uh, it's a creative, a uh, unique way to uh, sort of uh, push that brand uh, of sneaker. And like you said, uh, for for those of us who are uh, big in the sneakers, uh, sneakerheads, if you will, uh, it presents a unique opportunity. And you always are looking for those unique opportunities, not only. Do two things: get a sneaker that you really enjoy, and then support your school as well. So, uh, very creative uh, branding, if you will. And uh, I, you know, I, I like the the fact that they're uh, going about this uh, Jordan brand partnership. Yeah, and I'll go a little bit 
bit deeper into it because Tatum actually wore them. He wore the Howards in game two. Mm. Um, so that, you know, there was a little bit of buzz about that. Um, I have not seen Luca wear them. He's actually been wearing his first ones um, from what I've seen. Um, I see, I've seen him wear the Luca threes, but he's, he's been wearing, he went back to his first model, um, for at least a couple of the games, but <clears throat> I, just, I, I thought it was very, very interesting. And I, I've seen them really kind of push this out, uh, on social media and, um, hopefully, you know, the people can get behind it because, um, like I said, it's an interesting way to kind of drum up that, that, uh, uh, to, to drum up some money and, and uh, tap into that, that, that sneakerhead community. And here's a little bit of, because, you know, anytime I get to talk a little bit of sneaker geekery, I will never turn that away. So <clears throat> Howard is not the first HBCU to be partnered with Jordan Brand. Now, this may come as a surprise to a lot of people. That would actually be uh, North Carolina a and So... <laughs> Come on, children. Let's go down the. Uh, let's, let's go for a little bit of a history lesson. So, basically, Jordan Brand, as we know them, <clears throat> they were a spinoff uh, from from Nike. They're still under that subsidiary, but they're on standalone company. I want to say like ninety seven, ninety eight. Um, so the first shoe that was released under that umbrella was the Air Jordan Thirteens. Worn by Denzel Washington. He got game for those of you who have seen that movie. Um, and so they also got into sponsoring colleges. So at that time, there was, they started with four. You had the University of Cincinnati. You had St. John's back when they were still called the Red Men. <laughs> I'm dating myself again on this. <laughs> uh, the University of, of California and North Carolina a and and this was them picking A and T was not a this wasn't a random thing. This wasn't a situation like on coming to America. They just spun the globe and put the hand somewhere. There is some connection between uh, the Jordan family and North Carolina A and T. Those people may not be aware that Michael Jordan has an older brother named Larry, mm-hmm. who he has said is actually the best basketball player in the family. The only problem is Larry was 5'8". But he actually uh, attended and played at North Carolina a t Oh, wow. Okay. Back in the uh, mid-'80s. And then he went on to play in the short uh, – he played professional ball. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some footage of him actually on YouTube, I think, from – I want to say like 86, 87. They're in the Bulls practice facility. He's dunking. He's – I mean – yeah, Larry, Larry had major bounce. He had he had game, but again, he was he was just five eight. So, you know, that was just interesting to kind of kind of tie that in to the past and and even uh, to to the future. So, <clears throat> an interesting uh, uh, story, I thought, um, and and hopefully, you know, some people will will pick up a, a, a few pairs. You know, no, no, I, that's fascinating. Yeah. And because I have, like I said, I've talked with some some people over, you know, in in the Howard Athletic Department, and I've seen some of some of the the stuff that they show. <laughs> it's nothing to compare to some of the the stuff that they've got uh, under wraps. I mean, they they have they have not skipped in terms of providing them with with high quality performance and 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 with the aesthetics to go along with it. So. <clears throat> Kudos to uh, Howard University, you know, on on doing that, and and uh, we'll we'll see how that that goes along. Like I said, you can I'm gonna plug myself because I actually wrote about it. You can go to HBCUsports.com and read my story about it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I like what you did there. <laughs> you see what I did there? Yeah, That's smart a, move. Yeah. I'm not opposed to some to the occasional dose of shameless self-promotion shameless I, self-promotion what's, what's better than that <laughs> hey if if i don't do it who else will <laughs> there you go all day all day so, so that being said let's go ahead and hop into our last break of the evening again this is episode 517 of inside the hbcu sports lab and we will catch you all on the other side
Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational. Powerhouse, intelligent and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K E A V E R S V O I C E dot com. Covers voice, covers voice, covers voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. You want him? Ooh, I like him. The Quicker Picker Upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the Quicker Picker Upper. From novice you can press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love laugh and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, yes, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. Welcome back to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab, episode 517. Myself, Brandon King, and Charles Bishop. So look, we have we've run through the gamut. We've talked a little bit of, of HBCU football. We talked some media day. We got into a little bit of, of hoops. We even worked in uh, some kicks. We've had we've had quite a <laughs> a full show here. Um mm-hmm. So I, look, I, I've got to ask, you know, I know we talked a little bit about the fine for basketball and, and worked in a little bit of the finals. Have you caught any of the of the games? Uh, yes. In between Luca crying. Yes, I have. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, the, the series could probably I, I, I don't know if it could have t- turned out any different. I, I did not expect. Uh, potential Boston sweep. I thought it would be. I thought it was literally going to go seven because I thought I did not know if Boston had enough offense to hang with with Dallas, but their defense is just so smothering. Uh, yeah. uh, Kyrie went off this last game, but he's having to work like all get out to to get his shots and things of that nature. But I mean, I mean, what can you say about the Celtics? They they are they're playing very physical. They're obviously in Luca's head. Uh, he can't stop crying even in the post game press conference. So it's like, bruh. And you know, if you're a Dallas fan, I, uh, boy, it's like you get through this and then you got a you got football season. So. That's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and you you know, it's funny. Like I was watching Game Three and I, I was texting with a couple of my partners, and 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 Dallas started. I mean, they were on fire, and. Cause I was working and I turned away. I think they was up by like fifteen. I looked back; it was nine. Then it was six. But I'm like Dallas. As well as they play, they went into halftime. I think it was fifty-one to fifty or fifty. Yeah. yeah. I said they're in trouble because they played about as well as they could play. Boston did not, and you're only up. It's a one possession game still. You can't pull away. Yeah. You can't pull away. They absolutely blitzed them in the third quarter. Now, they, now <clears throat> they made the run. They did, but, but they just they couldn't get stops when they they needed them. Yeah, and they, you know they and and they were still getting good looks. Um, but you know, playing the thing about playing from behind like that that is it takes so much out of you. Yeah, you constantly have to try to come back, and then when you get there, you're, huh. So I mean yeah. they and like I said I mean Drew Holiday the defense that he is playing Derek White is playing I, I mean Al Horford I mean they the 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 margin of error that Dallas has is razor thin yeah and I said I didn't see a sweep I thought maybe six um because I thought b- b- 
coming into the finals, I thought that overall out of the teams that were left, Dallas was playing overall the best basketball. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, they they, and, they can't. And, and for me, I knew Jalen Brown was good, but he, he has absolutely elevated himself to superstar status uh, in terms of money buckets. Uh, they can't stop him. And, and then, and then the fact that Luca is such a liability on defense. They're just putting him in in switches all game. He doesn't have a foot speed, and yeah, it, it'll, it'll probably be done Friday. So I got the weekend to play a little golf. Because <laughs> this is looking like it's 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 going to be over, and then you know, well, what's after that? Bait? Well, no, we got the WNBA, so I guess I'll turn my my focus to that a little more. But yeah, I, I don't think. If they if they may get one, you know the home crowd may hype them up, but this is not going. It's not going more than five. Oh yeah, yeah, you know? no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And you look at you know just the, the Drew Holiday and, and and that I mean that trade was just that was just absolutely huge. Uh, even even without Przingis, they're clearly the superior basketball club. So um, yeah, I, I just I just wanted to, to talk a little bit <laughs> a little bit of hoops. Continue our, our multifaceted. Uh, coverage of today, so I think with with uh, with that being said, that's gonna conclude episode five seventeen. So as always, you know, thank you for listening to the HBCU Sports Lab. Definitely make sure to share our wonderful podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am not Doctor. I am Brandon King, <laughs> coming from. Inside the HBCU Sports Lab, the College of HBCU Sports with Charles Bishop today. Um, we hope, hopefully we, we brought you an enjoyable show. And as we like to, to end every show, I'll start it off. Because last time I think broke, I didn't get to do it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Lecture. This is it.